Hi, I'm Brian Mallow. This video is part of a series I'm producing in partnership with Sigma Xi, the Scientific Research Honor Society. It's intended to bring you up-to-date, evidence-based answers to questions about the COVID-19 outbreak. This is a special video because it speaks to the process of scientific understanding. We're in the midst of a rapidly changing situation, and because it concerns a virus and a disease that are new to science, there are a lot of unknowns, and we're learning more about it every day, literally. Scientists will change their assessments, and agencies like the Center for Disease Control will change their recommendations based on the latest information they have. So a few weeks ago, for a previous video, I asked a virologist whether our pets could be infected by the virus. And she said at the time that, of course, they can carry it as a surface on their bodies, just like any other surface, like a handrail. There was no evidence at the time that they could be infected by or show symptoms of the virus. Well, since we spoke, new evidence has emerged relevant to that question and other things we spoke about, and we both agreed that we should just conduct an entirely new interview. To be clear, this is not about a flaw in the scientific process. This is actually about one of its strengths. Scientists don't draw their conclusions from anecdotes or opinions or wishes. They use the best available evidence. So, on April 8th, 2020, I spoke again to Dr. Barbara Sherry. She's a professor of virology and the department head in molecular biomedical sciences at North Carolina State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And I asked her what we now know about the ability of pets to carry the virus. Well, when we spoke about three weeks ago, we knew very little. We actually know a lot more now. Uh, we know that it can infect cats. It, and we know that first because there were two or three cats that were found to have, to have the virus in them when they were in the household of a severely infected person. Those Pets uh, had no. There were there were uh, two or three dogs, or two or th and two or three cats. Only one of those pets had any symptoms at all and recovered. Uh, now, when you think about the, the millions of infections of and human of humans around the planet right now, and I have to tell you about maybe two or three dogs and two or three cats. I think that tells you that the frequency with which our pets might be infected is probably very, very low. And on top of that, only one of the cases I know of did the pet have symptoms. So the first lesson is that your pets are safe from you. But if you are, they can be infected. So if you are coughing and have a fever and you have been told that you likely have this virus, isolate yourself from your pets just like you would isolate yourself from any family member. Don't snuggle with your pets because you might, you might infect your pet. We now have more direct information because uh, there was an excellent scientific study done where they deliberately infected cats or try to infect cats, dogs, ferrets, I'm going to come back to that in a minute, uh, pigs, and chickens, because they wanted to try and find out whether these animals could be infected and could be a source of spreading the virus to humans. Well, pigs and chickens didn't get infected, so our food, our food animals are good. They're safe. Uh, dogs, very hard to infect them, very minimal infection. We know that dogs can be infected because there were a couple that were infected by their owners, but it's probably very infrequent. But cats was a different story. They were able to infect the cats. And importantly, when they infected the cat and put the cat in a cage and had that caged cat next to another cage that had a cat, so those cats were not touching each other. They were not sharing food. They were not licking each other. They were only sharing air. The infected cat was able to transmit the virus to the uninfected cat. So 
So that tells us that cats can not only get infected, but they can transmit the virus to other cats. We also now know uh, that in Wuhan, the Chinese city where this originally uh, broke out, they looked to see just feral cats, cats that are wandering the streets that don't have any owners. They asked, were those cats ever infected? And they could do that by looking at the cat's immune response. They don't have to find the virus in the cat. They can just say, do you have that memory? We talked about immune memory. If you've ever been infected by a virus, your immune system has a memory of it. And they asked, do these wild, these feral cats, these cats that have no home, do they have a memory of a viral infection? And about 14 or 15 percent of them did. So 14 out of every 100 cats had a memory. So we know that the cats can be infected, but most cats don't have symptoms. And there is absolutely no evidence that infected cats can transmit the virus back to humans. So we have no evidence to think that you are not safe from your pet. Does, the final story I want to tell, because it's been recently in the news, is the Bronx Zoo. There was a tiger that had respiratory symptoms, a dry cough and a fever. And then pretty soon some other tigers and a handful of lions also had respiratory symptoms. And they figured out, they determined that the handler, the zookeeper, uh, had been pre-symptomatic. He later came down with, with COVID-19. And they believed that he was the source of the infection. Well, those big cats, they were infected. They had some symptoms. They were mild. And they've recovered since then. They're doing fine. So, and we have no evidence that they transmitted it back to any humans. So I would say that on average, transmission to pets and between pets is a very small and infrequent part of this story. Nobody should fear their pets. Everybody should feel, you know, take solace. I mean, in this social isolation world right now, where you're staying at home all the time, your best friend is your best friend, right? This is your, your dog who's always been by your side could be your only companion right now. And there is no reason to fear that animal. Uh, but if you get infected and you are coughing and have a fever, let somebody else take care of your pet.